Hello, my name is Shahriyar Shahriyari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory linear algebra based on my book, Retrolinear. The subject of this lecture is vector space isomorphisms. And the motivating question for us is how many vector spaces of a given dimension are there actually out there? Um, so let me uh, get us started by quickly reviewing uh, where we started in this whole linear algebra journey. So we started by defining vector spaces. And what was a vector space quickly? We have a non-empty set. We have a field of scalars. For first time viewers, the field of scalars is the real numbers. Just think whenever you see an F, think of it as the real numbers. But the, the scalars could in fact be other things, could be any, uh, any place where you can add, you can multiply, you can subtract, and you can divide by non-zero elements. Um, we have two operations. We have an addition and scalar multiplication on the elements uh, of V. We can add two elements and multiply them scalars by the elements of the vector space. And these, prop these uh, operations have a set of properties. So addition, for example, um, you can add two elements and get a third element, uh, some other element. Uh, it has to be commutative. It has to be associative. There has to be a zero. There has to be negatives. Um, and the same thing with scalar multiplication. The uh, conditions that we put on these uh, operations were not too stringent. It just it, it seemed like uh, there are quite um, uh, reasonable conditions to have on addition and scalar multiplication. And whenever you have a situation like this, where you have a, a non-empty set, a field of scalars, and then you have two operations of addition and scalar multiplication, we call that a vector space over the field F. Now, um, this was an abstract notion. We did not uh, identify what the elements of our set are or even what the operations are. And we did that for a purpose. Um, our, we insisted on this abstract approach so that we could tackle a great many examples at the same time, as well as be able to sort of understand what make, makes um, these properties tick. So by not focusing on very particular things, we can take a bird's eye view and uh, sort of look under the hood and see what about uh, uh, what is it that make uh, uh, linear algebra work. But our main reason for going this abstract ap approach was that we said there's great many mathematical situations where um, we have an addition and scalar multiplication, and therefore it makes sense to not study any one of them in particular, but look at uh, the more abstract general approach. And uh, we had many different examples of vector spaces. For example, Rn and Fn. F, if Rn, if, if your scalars are real numbers, uh, and those would be n tuples, but, but if you want the scalars from some other field, you would have Fn. Now we had polynomials of degree less than or equal to n uh, with real coefficients, or of course, polynomials with degree less than or equal to n with coefficients from any field. We had matrices, n by m matrices over the reals or over any field. Uh, we had the set of solutions to homogeneous system of linear equations. Um, that was a, a vector space. The set of solutions to homogeneous linear differential equation was a, a vector space. Uh, we had function spaces, um, the functions from R to R, for example. Um, and we have the subspaces of any of the above. Each one of these has tons of different kinds of subspaces, all of those vector spaces. And therefore we were developing a theory all throughout this course, if you have been watching the videos up to here, so, so as to be able to apply to all of them. And in fact, whenever we had examples, we would have examples from a variety of these different uh, situations. Now, the question animating this lecture is that are any of these uh, vector spaces actually the same vector space? I mean, they don't look different, but as far as linear algebra is concerned, are they the same or not? And in particular, like to, to, to focus our attention, um, how many truly different vector spaces of dimension 47 can you find? That's what we want to answer. So, uh, so for this, we have to decide what do we mean by same? And this is what we have been talking about in several uh, videos. It's, a, it's the concept of isomorphisms. So two vector spaces, if you think of them as the same, we call them isomorphic. And, and we have an isomorphism that acts like a translation from one to the other. Uh, you should watch the other um, more introductory uh, uh, videos on isomorphisms before going on if you're not familiar with the concept. But, but the definition is as follows. You have two uh, different vector spaces over the same field F. The scalar's got to be the same for V and W if you want to call them the same, 
or, 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 or the same uh, vector spaces. Then we have a translation map, T, a function from V to W. And we wanted it to call that an isomorphism. Uh, we want it to be a linear transformation. So T of X plus Y should be T of X plus T of Y. T of alpha X should be alpha times T of X. Those two, those two mean that they, the, the T preserves addition and scalar multiplication. And it means that we can translate linear algebra questions, which are all, always about linear combinations, spanning linear independence bases and so forth from one vector space to another. We also want the map to be one-to-one -one and onto because if we want for every element of the domain, um, we have a uh, uh, undisputed um, element of the co-domain that it's, uh, that it's uh, related to it. Um, when we say two vector spaces are isomorphic, if there is an isomorphism from V to W. And again, the way we think about isomorphic vector spaces is that as far as linear algebra is concerned, they are really the same because you can ask your linear algebra question in from one of the, if you have a linear algebra question from one of these vector spaces, you can translate it using this T to the other vector space and you will always get the right answer if you, instead of asking your question in the first vector space, ask it in the isomorphic copy. And the notation we're using is this V equals with a squiggly sign on top W, which means V is isomorphic to W, which again means that there is an isomorphism. Now, in the previous video, we came up with a rich collection of isomorphisms, uh, these translation maps, we, and that those were the coordinate maps. So let me uh, remind you of those, and then we will get on with, uh, with answering the question that animated this, this lecture. So if V is a finite dimensional vector space over, over a field F, um, and if you have a uh, ordered basis for V, so you have a basis, but you also determine an order for, for them in which order they are, then for every vector V, you can write it as a linear combination of the basis elements because it's a basis and so it spans. And so every vector is a linear combination of them, but also because it's a basis, those, that those scalars are unique. You can't, if you write V with in some way as a linear combination of V1 through V and you can't do it some other way. Now, if you had a general spanning set, you might be able to write some vector in different ways, but not if you have a basis. Linear independence assures you that there's not two ways to write uh, the, the, that element as a linear combination of the basis elements. And so what we do then is that we um, define the coordinate vector of V with respect to this basis. And this is bracket V with a subscript V. And what that is, is an element of Fn because these scalars are all from the field F. Again, the real numbers, if you're a first time viewer. Um, and you put those scalars as a column vector and you get an element of Rn if those are real, real numbers or an element of Fn. And whatever this is, this column vector is called the coordinate vector of uh, that vector V with respect to this basis B. If you change the basis, of course, the coordinates will change. And um, then we define a function, the coordinate map uh, from the vector space to Fn by sending every vector to its coordinate vector. So again, if the, the scalars are real numbers, you're sending your vector space to Rn. Um, and what is n? n is the dimension of your vector space. And this map is called the coordinate map of V relative to this basis B. And the theorem that we proved um, in, the, in, the, in the last lecture is that if you have a vector space over again any field F, and if you have an ordered basis for V, then this coordinate map is an isomorphism. Um, it gives you an isomorphism. So now, um, so, 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 the, so we have a set of isomorphisms and those are coordinate maps. And in, in the previous video, we didn't think about what that really means that we have all these um, uh, vector space isomorphisms and that's what we're gonna do now. And in fact, um, the consequences are quite far reaching. So let's see, the first one, the corollary of, of the fact that coordinate maps are isomorphisms is that let's say that we have a vector space over R with real, uh, real scalars and, and assume that you know the dimension, maybe the dimension is 47, maybe it's five, maybe it's three, let's say it's N, then, and, and, there, and the, the point is that there's no other conditions. I just have a vector space and all I know about it, it's the dimension, then it's isomorphic to Rn. So every vector space of dimension 47 with real, with, with, when the scalars are reals is isomorphic to R47. Okay, 
This means that there's really only one vector space of dimension 47 uh, when, when you're using reals as, as scalars, because they're all isomorphic to R47. So if you're walking down the street, you meet a vector space. And if you know that it's a finite dimensional vector space, and if you know the scalars are reals, all you have to do is ask, if you have just going to ask one question, you know, you know, you're passing, you're in a hurry, what's your dimension? If you know the dimension, you know what it's isomorphic to. You know that it's isomorphic to, if it says the dimension is seven, it's isomorphic to R7. There's only one vector space of dimension five, and that's R5. Um, so what, what's, what's, what's the proof of that? So you pick a basis, the basis has N elements, and then the coordinate map is an isomorphism, and then we're done. So that means that V is isomorphic to Rn. So the heavy lifting for this was already done when we proved that coordinate maps are isomorphisms. Uh, the coordinate map goes from the vector space to Rn, where N is the dimension of the vector space, and it's an isomorphism. So V and Rn are isomorphic. The coordinate map allows you to translate back and forth between V and Rn. And this is that there's nothing special about R here. If you the vector space was over a field F, again, all that means is that the scalars are not real numbers, but are come from some other field, then the, uh, the vector space would not be isomorphic to Rn, would be isomorphic to Fn. And the proof would be the same thing. Uh, the coordinate map from V to Fn would be as an isomorphism, and that would make V isomorphic to Fn. Okay, now um, here's another corollary. If you have two finite dimensional vector spaces and you're wondering, are they isomorphic or not, then, uh, and they're over the same field F, they both have to be over the same field F, meaning that again, the scalars are from the same field F, then they're isomorphic if and only if their dimensions are the same. So if you're wondering uh, if this is two vector spaces the same um, are, are, are isomorphic, which again, the way I heuristically I think about it is that as far as linear algebra is concerned, they're the same. They might have some other properties that are not, that are very different from each other, but any kind of a linear algebra question you can ask from one, you can ask from the other and you will get the same answers. That's, that, that's the point about isomorphisms. And if, you, if two vector spaces walk through the door and you're wondering, are these guys the same or not? All you have to do is figure out what their dimension is dimension of V and dimension of W. If they're the same, the vector spaces are the same. If they're not, they're not. So what is the proof of this? And again, this points out to the importance of dimension and why we spend so much time very carefully defining dimension because dimension tells us a lot about vector spaces. And the proof that there is if and only if, so I have to go two directions, neither one is particularly difficult. So on the one direction, assume you know V is isomorphic to W, uh, let's see why the dimensions are the same. There exists, so because they're isomorphic, there must be an isomorphism. I don't know what it is, but there gotta be one. So let's call it T. And, um, and, and what is an isomorphism? It's a linear transformation, but it's one-to-one -one and onto. Because it's one-to-one, -one, then that means that the kernel is just a zero vector. That means that the dimension of the kernel, which is the nullity, just zero. But T is also onto, which will mean that the dimension of the, the, the image which is the rank of T, the same as the dimension of the codomain, which is W. So rank of T is the same as dimension of W. And for linear transformations, we have this very powerful theorem, the rank nullity theorem. And the rank nullity theorem says the dimension of the domain is always the rank plus nullity. And here the nullity is zero and the rank is W. So what we get is zero plus dimension of W. And so what we got is dimension of V is equal to dimension of W, which is what we wanted. So the proof wasn't that difficult at this point. Actually, I'm, I'm sort of lying because we are putting, we have spent all this time developing all these things. Like for example, the rank nullity theorem, um, um, the knowing things about rank and nullity. And so, I mean, all the stuff that we have put together, um, it's actually a fair amount of stuff. Uh, but but uh, and I'm sure changing it by saying that this is that this is, str is straightforward. The point is that the heavy lifting has already been done. So that's one direction. If V and W are isomorphic, their dimensions must be the same. Now, what if uh, you just know that their dimensions are the same? Then what? Well, then by the coordinate maps, we know that V is isomorphic to Fn, and W is isomorphic to Fn. But but when we talked about isomorphisms in a previous video, we showed that they they are um, the, the relationship is symmetric and it's also transitive. So in other words, 
what we can say is that V is isomorphic to Fn and Fn is isomorphic to W. If W is isomorphic to Fn, Fn is isomorphic to W. And then we have transitivity. If V is isomorphic to Fn and Fn is isomorphic to W, V must be isomorphic to W. That wasn't actually too that, that difficult either. I mean, the idea wasn't that difficult in that if V is isomorphic to Fn, there's an isomorphism from V to Fn. If W is isomorphic to Fn, there's an, there is an isomorphism from W to Fn, but the inverse of that goes from Fn to W. And then you can compose the two isomorphisms from V to Fn and Fn to W to get an isomorphism directly from V to W. And we are done. Okay. But, but let me just emphasize what we have shown, that if a vector space of dimension 47 walks in, you know what it is. It's R for R47. As long as it's dimension 47 and the scalars are real numbers, there is no other one. There's only, over the reals, there's only one vector space of each dimension. Okay, let me say this one more time. So first of all, these res the, the, the results we just talked about um, are a little bit deeper than you might expect because you, if you think about it. So we began by studying this abstract and seemingly very general concept of a vector space. And in fact, we made the case that this is very abstract because it applies to all these different things and we have all these different examples. Um, and, um, um, and, and actually, actually in my earlier videos, I went to great lengths to convince you that we want to be rigorous and we have to do proofs and so on because we, we are lo studying lots of different objects at the same time. And we don't want to say something that might be true about some of the examples, but not true about others. But now what we have found out is that um, that's actually not true. Um, that oh, for each dimension, there's actually just one vector space. Um, namely, the only vector space of dimension 47 is R to the 47. Um, as long as the scalars are real numbers. If you change the scalars, you get a different one. But for every set of scalars, you have one vector space of each dimension. So that whole uh, stuff that I said about uh, uh, there's all kinds of different vector spaces that we want to study, uh, you could call that fake news. It, this says we just proved that that's actually not true. Our seemingly innocent um, uh, looking definition of a vector space, those conditions that we put that seem to be so general and sort of weak, actually were pretty strong. They impose so much restrictions that there's actually to, to satisfy those and to be of a certain dimension and the scalars be real, you just have, there's just one thing. There's no more things. There's just one thing that satisfies those relations and that's it. Um, this also justifies focusing on Rn. So another approach to linear algebra would be to not talk about these general vector spaces and, and, and start by focusing on dimension and linear independence and spanning and so on, but jump in and start studying Rn and just say that, okay, we're just gonna look at N tuples and, 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 and study what they say. Um, and, and in fact, a lot of modern uh, linear algebra uh, courses do that then sort of non-retro uh, linear algebra courses. My course is a retro course, so it does this this other way. And, and, and they're justified because all the action is in Rn. Rn is the only vector space there is. So might as well study that and, and, and jettison this, this sort of more abstract approach. Of course, there's, a, there's an advantage to, doing, uh, to, to going through the story the way we have done it, because now we know <laughs> that, uh, it, that, that, that there is only one vector space. And also we know that we can study these other things but, all, but we now can translate them to Rn. And then they actually, that's the great, the, the general advantage uh, um, of, of what we did. Um, I, I'm sort of being not serious about saying that uh, we shouldn't have done that um, uh, in, in, the, in the sense that now we can study polynomials or matrices or function spaces and so forth by translating things uh, to Rn. It also, points to the importance of dimension. Dimension for finite dimensional vector spaces is really crucial. Infinite dimensional vector spaces are, are, are different. They're, they're, they, they're, they come in, in, in quite a bit of variety. And in fact, uh, um, there's quite a few mathematicians that would only study uh, infinite dimensional vector spaces and would sort of think of finite dimensional vector spaces as, as sort of a trivial matter, mainly because of the, what we just saw, that there's really not that much 
uh, that, that much happening with finite dimensional vector spaces. But in finite dimensional vector spaces, the key thing, information, is dimension. Again, walk down, if you're walking down the street, if you somehow meet a vector space, and, and if you know two things about it, that's finite dimensional, and you know what the scalars are, then all you need to know to figure out one way or the other is what the dimension. And if you know the dimension, you basically know what kind of a vector space it is and what can you expect uh, from that. Finally, this actually now tells us that the scalars should take the center stage. All throughout the course, the scalars got shortchanged. Uh, often in a proof, I would say, okay, I'm just gonna do it for addition, but for scalars, ah, that's the same thing. Um, and always have said, oh, the scalars can be the are reals or a field um, and not really spend that much time on scalars. But now we see that if you're interested in variety, if you want a bunch of vector spaces of dimension five, what you need is different fields because each set of scalars gives you a vector space. And those vector spaces are very different from each other. So R47 is very different than Z747, where Z7 is integers um, mod seven, um, or, um, or Q47, rationals, uh, uh, is very different than uh, C47, the complexes uh, for 47 dimensional space. The, the scalars is where the action is. Um, the scalars is what gives us variety and really we should be paying attention to if we wanna understand vector spaces in a deeper sense. And in fact, in courses in linear algebra, one does exactly that. In fact, there you study fields in general. In fact, in uh, abstract algebra classes, you try to come up with, um, uh, think of a study uh, ve vector spaces where the scalars aren't even fields and are something called rings. At that time, you don't wanna call the, ve the, the, the object that you get a vector space as so as not to confuse it with what we've been studying, you call it something else. And those are called modules. Um, but mon modules is, is the same idea as vector spaces, except the scalars are now more general than fields. You, you don't need a division anymore. You just need addition, subtraction, and, 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 and multiplication. The theory becomes much more subtle and much more complicated, but, but um, we, you, you sort of try to do uh, the same kinds of things that we have been doing. But again, there, the scalars end up being uh, very important. So this lecture um, brings to, sort of to an end one part of the story, which was, we started with vector spaces and we wanted to study them and see like this uh, very abstract notion, where will it get us? And it got us to the point where we now know for every dimension, there's only one vector space, as long as you, fix the you know what the scalars are. Um, as we go along, we will do more, uh, we will now use this fact, the fact that we can translate things to Rn and, and study other things. And, and, and our next simplifying task is to realize that all linear transformations from finite dimensional vector spaces to other finite dimensional vector spaces are really matrices. This is the end of this lecture. Um, I will see you in the next lecture.